This game could get real ugly real quick. Let's dive into the analysis. Welcome back to Break Burst DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Why my channel? Well, I'm going to release four NFL videos a week, one for Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football, and the Sunday Main Slate. So we have the Battle of New York, kind of. Um, I mean, this line is insane. 15 point underdogs. The the New York Giants are 15 point underdogs going into Buffalo. Uh, if you believe Vegas, they say that the final score would be somewhere around 30 to 15. And these teams are so lopsided at this point that even saying 30 to 15 just doesn't seem right. Obviously, uh, Las Vegas could be wrong. The odds makers could be wrong. All of us could be wrong. And that is why we play the game. And these games aren't just these Madden simulations. So let's jump into this. So the first thing I like to look at are the snap counts. And let's start with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, their quarterback is Josh Allen, arguably one of the top three quarterbacks in all of football. Then you have the running back situation. You have James Cook. Uh, he's been on the field roughly about 60% of the time, most of the time. And then occasionally you'll have the veteran Murray or the veteran Harris uh, come in there. Then a lot of times with Gilliam, it's either a trick player just, you know, doing fullback duties or just running a really short route. But this is definitely James Cook, Cook's backfield. The problem is that uh, Josh Allen is not only the QB1, but he's also the RB1, especially when you get close in the red zone. So a lot of times it's really hard to fully get all of the points you want from any Buffalo Bills running back. All right, so the wide receivers, they have a lot of wide receivers. Um, like a lot of good quarterbacks, um, you know, some of the, some of the, some of the lesser skilled quarterbacks, they just kind of zone in on one person, usually their best player, and they just don't do a good job of going through all of their reads. But when you have these good quarterbacks like Josh Allen, they're going to throw, they're going to find who's open. So even though no doubt Stephon Diggs is the wide receiver one, no doubt about it. And you know that if you don't throw to him, it's going to be some drama. You can see that Gabe Davis is on the field a lot. And even though he had a down year last year, we know he's a good wide receiver. You have Sherfield on the field 20 to 40 percent of the time. You have Hardy on the field around 20 percent of the time. And you even have Shakur on the field 15 to 30 percent of the time. So, you know, Diggs is going to get his, you know, Davis is probably going to get his. And then it's kind of a coin flip to see who is going to get a get a target or two and the right kind of target. We're not talking about two targets for seven yards. We're talking about that downfield target, that that touchdown, that uh, that that slate breaker that happens. What was it? Uh, uh, Tony for the Chiefs. Tony, he broke the slate. Simple as that. The people that that were able to just guess what wide receiver that Patrick Mahomes is going to go to when they landed on Tony, those people were rewarded uh, for the last showdown contest. At tight end, so there was a lot of talk in the preseason about, you know, Kincaid having more of a share, but Knox has still been on the field more and has been a better target. So that really hasn't changed. The Giants. I mean, I have to have a moment of silence for the Giants. They were already not having a great year, and then Daniel Jones is injured. So now you have Tyrod or Tyrod. I think one time on Hard Knocks he said it's Tyrod. You have Taylor. Let's just call him Taylor. Taylor is now the quarterback, and he's not the worst. I mean, he's one of the better backups in the league, but he's still a backup going against the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. Uh, and the offensive line right now is in shambles. So you have a backup quarterback going up against one of the top five teams in the league at their home for one of the with a very banged up and low quality offensive line. Uh, your main running back might not play and probably shouldn't play with this offensive line, Saquon Barkley. So not good. Uh, so even if Barkley plays, Brita has not shown that he 
he is an RB1. It just it just hasn't it hasn't been there. So this I mean this is why they're 15 point underdogs. This is just nasty. This is this is nasty. And then we don't know the chemistry. We we kind of started to learn the chemistry that Daniel Jones had had with his wide receivers, but we don't know which wide receivers you know Tyrod Taylor has a like, chemistry with. Uh, Slayton is usually on the field the most. Um, you have Paris Campbell. You have the rookie Hyatt. Uh, even though Wandale since he's come back, he's really been uh, the wide receiver that's gotten the most love. So definitely uh, someone, if we're going to target, I mean, we got to target at least one person, right, from the Giants. I mean, you can't have a 6-0 Bills. Uh, build so you, you, you got to have somebody so I definitely like Wondell uh, Robinson but you know what that was assuming maybe Tyrod Taylor didn't have the same chemistry with Robinson I don't know Waller is questionable if Waller doesn't play then Bellinger looks really nice at his price and we know uh, that he does have the skills we know he does have those tight end one skills it's just that Waller is one of the when he's healthy has been one of the better tight ends over the past three to five years so this is a mess <laughs> so when you're making your your lineup bill the first thing you ask yourself is am i gonna go four two bills or am i gonna go five one bills obviously anything can happen these are professional players we know the gap between you know good and bad is smaller than we like to admit so but just know if you go three three buffalo new york and if you definitely want to get real get real spicy and go 4-2 Giants. Just know that you are putting yourself in a very contrarian place, in a really different place. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that the farther away you go from 4-2, you know, Buffalo or 5-1 Buffalo, just know that you're actually putting yourself in a position to be different. And at the same time, when you get that lineup and it's 4-2, you know, Buffalo or 5-1 Buffalo, and you're like, yeah, nobody ever thought of this. I mean, somebody has probably thought of it because it makes sense to go 4-2 or really 5-1 Buffalo. So let's make our first lineup. So our first lineup, we put in Diggs. It's pretty obvious why we have in Diggs. We can look at his game logs, beautiful. His one bad game was scoring 13.6 points. Uh, last two games, 28 and 39 points. I mean, I don't have to sell you on this. If you have Diggs, you're gonna wanna have, you wanna, you're gonna wanna have Allen. So I mentioned uh, the only uh, giant, and let's, let's say we do a bill like this. We do want Robinson. Robinson has uh, played well since he's returned. He's had six targets, six targets, five targets. Uh, he hasn't, you know, hit pay dirt, but you can see he sometimes rushes. I mean, he's just a he's just a great fantasy and actual with real wide receiver on a different team. He have a different fate. Uh, so we're going with the case where this is kind of a blowout. So we're putting in. You know, Bass, who's one of the higher scoring kickers. You can see he's had two bad games, but when he doesn't have a bad game, he has an amazing game, 14, 15, and 13, you know, points. And then we're going with the Buffalo defense. Once again, no disrespect uh, to, uh, to Ty Tyrod Taylor, but uh, even with, with the offensive line and all of the troubles that the Giants are having, it makes sense to put the Bills uh, defense in. And then you can, uh, if you want to make it a 4-2 kind of build, uh, you can put in Paris Campbell with the assumption with the assumption that the Giants are going to be down and Taylor's going to need to sling the rock. So this is a 4-2 Buffalo build uh, that makes a lot of sense based on everything that we know. Now, uh, if you want to get a little different, maybe you feel that uh, Allen is going to vulture um, a lot of the touchdowns. So let's say you put in Allen and let's say you put in Gabe Davis. So, you know, this is a situation where you fade Diggs and we know that any why anybody can be faded with all of the injuries we have and just because a wide receiver needs his um his quarterback to throw to him so that's a situation where we fade you know digs and then that gives you that gives you some funds and that point let's say we put in <clears throat> let's say we put in you know uh knox let's check on knox to make sure he's okay um mm, they're both kind of uh banked up but let's say that knox does get out there and play and then we can get rid of bass and then we're going to put in waller so this situation once again where we have waller and robinson we still have the bills defense uh and we fade dig so if this is probably one of the few four two 
kind of lineups where you are getting a little different because you're fading digs really risky but uh you do have allen in the captain spot so you will get some of those points if digs does go off all right so one lineup where we try to make it a little bit spicy let's say you know we put you know taylor we know he's a he's a running um quarterback he's a mobile quarterback so let's say that we put taylor in and let's say that in the captain spot we put robinson in and let's say things actually go the way this is just a game i mean it, anything is possible anything is possible we know good is a good kicker even though he's been on this team so it's not showing as much in the points but we put in three giants and then we put in Diggs and allen and then with the remaining funds we put in uh i think he's in concussion protocol um but let's say we put him in let's say he actually plays so this is a 3-3 three, three, um construction and i just feel like a construction like this will be pretty contrarian but like i said you never know we've seen i mean buffalo lost to the jets and and the Jaguars, even though the Jaguars we know are a, uh, a pretty good team, but what I'm what I'm getting at is uh, anything is possible. Uh, I really hope this is an interesting game and just not a snore fest, but we will see. Anyway, so leave any questions or comments for me and I'll try to answer them and get to them, but otherwise I'll talk to you next time. Welcome. Hey. You made it to the end of the video. If you like more content like this, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and I'll talk to you next time.